Yeah, what a day, huh? Uh, not me, Infidelity News seems, it does seem huge. And uh, I just picked it up. So we'll see how that works out. And remember, like, I know that the, the market sucks right now, but hey, you know what? There's a lot of things going on behind the backgrounds. And uh, I don't, I just don't see how uh, we don't increase over time. It just depends on the macro events. That's why I cover macro sometimes. <laughs> I admire the amount of corruption. It's truly really impressive. That is true. Bye bye, daddy. I'm nobody's that uh, dad. Uh, it's a good play. That's a great comment. I never thought about that. Real big fish plays the rave again. I'd get behind a fidelity purchase of Voyager. Yeah, so would I. Wow, wouldn't that be a great way to for uh, cost of acquisition for customers? You don't know. Like it's it, it's uh, pretty pricey to acquire customers. So if you can just kind of pull them in through Voyager, go look. We know what you did over there. We're going to offer the same thing over here. It's going to be the same type of service, but we're not going to loan out to you know three euros capital and do stupid earn things. I'm not placing blame. I know why they did it. It's just that let's just need time to move on. All right. No, I don't. Uh, Del Boy says, Rob, do you have any preference on who buys Voyager? I do not. As long as they make everybody as whole as possible, I don't. I don't even care about Celsius. Celsius is a dead brand. Uh, if they come through with that Bitcoin mining operation and were able to actually uh, perform that uh, security token, and later on when they IPO, I'd get behind that. I'm going to be here for the next five, 10 years anyhow, so why not? David does bring it up, Sweatcoin, September 12th. Uh, also, I know people have been having a problem with the Sweatcoin. They just updated the app, so please download, re-update the app. Works up right. Thank you, David. <laughs> uh, the Shaolin, good point, saying 2% inflation is ridiculous. I agree with James that to get us 2% is impossible. We must service the debt and 2% inflation will break the central bank system. James got a... Or, yeah, James got a pretty good, pretty good beat on it. He doesn't think we can get the two percent. He doesn't think we can keep raising, and uh, because it'll destroy the GDP. I'm telling you, uh, he's right on that. It will destroy the GDP. And uh, but I just gotta. You have to take a look at the lesser of two evils. In all honesty, do we want to keep up with this inflation as it goes up? And like what Jerome said, the public perception is the most difficult thing to get that inflation rate down. He talked about it in the 1970s and 80s. I think he's still going to do it. I think everything be damned. And then I think they're going to overshoot and it's going to overcorrect. It's going to crush the uh, economy for a while. Then things will swing back. Remember, there is a difference between Wall Street and the economy. I know people like to think that it's the same thing. It's not. It's, it, it really isn't. There's a, there's a big disconnect. And I think there's a disconnect too between sometimes the economy and crypto. But uh, when it happens, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Thank you. I try to keep it tame. Uh, no? Okay. With ETH goes the proof of stake, does that mean they now have a fixed max supply? I don't think that's going to happen. Correct me in the comments section. I believe they don't. Uh, well, right now they don't because it's proof of work. A proof of stake. I never thought about that. Correct me in the comment section. I don't think it, uh, there is no, Ethereum and the foundation, they've agreed that there is no max supply that can keep, keep increasing. And then, uh, of course, but they also have that burn mechanism. So that's what kind of keeps everything in, in, in state instead of going, you know, crazy high. Oh, I got that. I think I went the wrong way. Uh... <laughs> I can see, I can totally see the Fed changing the target inflation rate to three or 3.5. Once you start easing, let's them reach it. Sure, why not? Maybe they could just come out and go, well, we did a pretty good job. It was at, hey, it was a 9%, we got a 3%. That's pretty good, done for the day. Close enough for government's work. You ever heard that phrase? <laughs> that would totally uh, be uh, justified in this situation. Yeah, not a fixed supply. I don't think how they could do that. I just got it. Do we go over Luna Classic? No, we will not be going over that. I know people like made a lot of money. A lot of people lost a lot of money. Luna Classic. I know it just, I think it's ranked, gosh, it went up there. But I think people are shorting it right now. I'm not for sure. But uh, if you're a trader, that sounds like a good thing. But this, that's not my, my field of expertise, as people clearly know. Yeah, thumbs up, please. That'd be nice. 
Any new thoughts on Hedera? No? Well, there was a story that we did uh, not too long ago. I think, what was it? It was about transaction costs being uh, a fraction of a penny and um, NFTs and something else. It sounded like it's pretty good. But, uh, but beyond, beyond that, not really. Yeah, my condolences to all our friends across the pond. <laughs> Not everyone in the UK is a royalist. That's true. Uh, this one, this one. Christopher McCarthy. Is the housing market going to dip further? I don't see how it couldn't. I mean, the supply is remaining and the demand is a little bit waning, but not as much as I thought it was. I was not, not correct on that. And it just depends on different, it, it just depends on the different locations. Like if you're talking about the housing market in Austin or Florida or parts of California, um, it's booming right now. People can't get into houses fast enough. But through other parts of the country, there's a little bit of a lag. But the, but the big question you have to ask yourself is, is the, is the supply more than post-COVID or pre-COVID? And how much are we talking about as far as like the supply versus the demand? And um, I, I'm kind of, uh, kind of expecting more of a, of a slump as time goes on because as, the, as they raise the rates, which they are, then people get priced out of homes. And when they get priced out of homes, because you don't, you buy a house usually just by going there and saying, this is how much I can afford per month. Okay, well, at 3.2% uh, uh, annual percentage rate, you, you know, whatever that house is, let's say it's a $400,000 house, well, I can afford that, you know, $2,500 or whatever else it is uh, uh, debt. But if it starts to go from 3.2 to 4.6, then 5.7, then all of a sudden, if you use that uh, amortization table and take a look at it, all of a sudden you're priced out and then you have to back out. And then of course that leads to more supply and of course less demand. There's, there's still the demand for a house, but not those expensive houses. Then they have to bring the houses down and the people, then the people actually built those houses take a loss and off it goes. From what I've heard from different developers, they're actually trying to um, build houses that are a little bit cheaper than, than like the Nick mansions. So. We'll see. I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for next year. And that's it. Clickbait, I don't know. Yeah, probably. That's my job, right? My job is to get you to click on it. Let's see. But be truthful. So if you miss the tone, if you miss the, the story, uh, watch the replay. I don't got time for it. Ah, that's true. That's very true. Brandon says the queen had a good run, historically significantly, in fact. It's not sad, rejoice, she did something literally nobody else in history has done. And now she suffers no more. That's a good way to say it, Brandon. Oh, Denver's the same way. <laughs> Robert, that's a good one. Oh, that's right. Callum, I think the burn mechanism, this is for Ethereum, after the merge increases, which would theoretic, theoretically make ETH 0.4% uh, inflationary. Hmm, we'll see. Wow. George, I'm glad you're here. I'm really glad you're here. I'm selling a piece of real estate and want to onboard into an exchange. Is it safe to store six figures on exchange or should I convert to USD in self-custody? George, I'm so glad you're here. I'm going to tell you that there are these rules that I wrote for a specific reason. And they are right below you. The rules. The rules are for me. You don't have to follow these, but these have done me quite well over time. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose and assume it's all gone. Everything that you run into is a scam and self proven otherwise. Leave absolutely nothing on exchanges. Don't use leverage for trades and take profits along the way because nobody ever went broke taking profits. This next one, this middle one, nothing on exchanges. Talk to the people in the chats who put their life savings in a Celsius and left it there. Talk to the people in the chats who put their college tuition into Voyager and it's stuck there. So George, I'm going to tell you with conviction, do not leave anything 
on any exchanges for any length of time as much as you possibly can and self-custody it. And I cannot make that any more clear than what I, what I just did. I'm glad you, you stopped by. Ah, David, uh, will you need to be on DC tomorrow? I will. I just got to reach out to Ben and James. Uh, I think it's on, I think it's on James's channel. And we'll go from there. Oof. Celsius claims are being bought up for 30% of their value. Do you think we'll get more than 30% out of bankruptcy? No. That's why if they liquidate, I think it's a bad move. I think we have to move forward with them and hopefully with that uh, Bitcoin mining operation because it will be profitable. It just will take time. <laughs> Betty White was cooler. Betty White was great. That's a great question. Aquamar Sunsal. Nailed it. Why is some staking not as easy as ADA stake? I don't know. But I got to tell you, one thing that Cardano did great out the bay, great out the park, or great out the gate, was the staking. It's so simple. Uh, there's no slashing. There's no lockup periods. Uh, you can you control your private keys, just like the last question that we had. You know, control uh, your your keys, not your keys, not your crypto. And um, in this situation, Cardano is the best out there. I think Ethereum minimum thirty two. You can have you can go through slashing. They can uh, you know it's a real and then of course the lockup periods. Which also, by the way, when this merge comes through, you still can't unstake your Ethereum if you wanted to. You have to wait till that Shanghai protocol update in six to twelve months. So with Cardano, yeah, we have a stake pool. If you'd like to check it out, there's a link in the description. The DNU stake pool. We have two, but uh, we're, we're only like a quarter full on both of them. So if you want to stake with us, 4 to 6% AP, APY or return on ADA. And uh, we haven't had any problems in over a year and a half. <laughs> Is life pure any good? I don't know about life pure. Uh, I can't I, I can't talk about it because I don't know it. Lewis says the next six months will open another opportunity. There's always opportunities ahead. It's just, you know, getting getting your mind right. And it's tough, but you guys can do it. Like I've always said, if you're here right now in the in the grips of the bear market, mentally, you're stronger than ninety some percent of the people out there who who cut and run, which is okay. You know, if you if you can't take it, it's fine. Just get out. But if you're still here and holding on going to get, uh, you're the ones that are probably going to do pretty well as time goes on. Uh, they say so the homes just get snapped up by people leaving LA and New York City. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I got no financial advice. I mean, I guess self-custody is in. James has always got interesting numbers. <laughs> Great. Great, George. I'm glad. You're welcome. Talladega. Steak with Dinos. Great. Yeah. I mean, I've tried it with AVAX. We we ran an AVAX steak pool, and um, it's it works okay, but it's just not as smooth as um, as Cardano. Just not. Digital cable. Uh, when are you announcing the D's winner? So the uh, premiere of the, there is a pro, a project I love. I've been with them for eight months or so. I bought my NFT back. I'm not big in NFTs. They don't make any sense to me, period. But I love the community. And uh, we did a premiere with uh, Cookie and, and Michael from the D's Nuts project. And that premiere will be out uh, in about an hour, matter of fact. And it'll be a live premiere, so it's pre-recorded, but I'll be in the, in the chats. And then it'll, it'll roll over to a Q&A with Michael and uh, Cookie from, from the project. And it's pretty good. I mean, they do a lot of great things for charity, for cancer, testicular cancer and, and breast cancer. They've got uh, some real-world utility, which is pretty nice. And uh, they got a fantastic community. And it's not always about making things so damn serious. Uh, sometimes you get a laugh. And that is exactly what they do to a great extent. I love those guys. Algo okay? Yeah, Algo's real okay. It went from 1,200 transactions per second to 6,000. It's going to be awesome. Rob, do you think Charles will be successful at convincing regulators Cardano is not a security? I Have you ever heard Charles talk uh, in front of Congress? I mean, he was there not too long ago. He's a pretty convincing fellow, so we'll see what he can do. And um, actually, uh, he might, I think he's uh, accepted to be on the show on the 23rd or 24th. 
No, it's not right. 27th, I think it is. So I'll ask him that question, actually. Why does Cardano get so much FUD? I don't know. Just like everything else, you know? People get, if you don't invest into it, of course, you don't understand. And it's hard to really get into it. It's, it's hard to be objective, even, with, even for me. Like, uh, I think it took me quite some time to, to get into uh, other coins outside of uh, Bitcoin. So it just takes time. And then some people will say it's a ghost chain, it's awful. And then some people will say, and just, just pick a chain. There's always a problem. Like Ethereum, they always say that uh, it'll never go to ETH 2.0. And remember, this merge is only the second step. The third step is, uh, is uh, sharding. Then they talk about Solana being too, too centralized and down for too long and different problems and so on and so forth. Then they talk about uh, Avalanche and different uh, issues that they're having over there. I don't want to get into that. So everybody's got, a, everybody's got an issue with something, even people with, with Bitcoin. They say it's just too slow and it's a boomer coin, doesn't really work out. It's not a store of value and so on and so forth. So just take your pick. Um, that's why I diversify a little bit because I don't know what's going to happen. Ah, this is a good one. Mutawi, Najabu, Matavu. Any thoughts on your DGen fame? So there's a second channel. It's called uh, Dan DGen. And there is a link. Let me see if I can find it. There is a link in the description. Looks just like this. Dan DGen, second YouTube channel. And that's for the very risky, risky plays. And I even say channels all about new products, very risky. And all underneath here, 5% DGEN plays. There's a, there's a spreadsheet. Let me just copy that. And it shows you how we've done so far. Fame. So fame was one that we, that we covered because it did actually quite well. But right now it's dropped to the face of the planet. Fame was pretty great because what they did was it was a crypto Finance smart chain uh, built on top of it. And what it does is, is fame is a, is a mixed martial arts uh, federation in, in parts of Europe. And what they do is they, they pit influencers against each other and they pay them. They, well, they used to pay them in cash. Now they pay them partially in fame and a little bit of cash and kind of back, for, back and forth. And I just, the, 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 the whole understanding and what it was all about was that it would do very well because of that aspect. And it did initially. So when we got in, it was a penny. We got 100,000 tokens. And then we bought that, you know, as it launched. And it went up to 47 cents. We did pretty good. Now, as you know, on this channel, uh, there's a thing that says, take profits. It's right under, it's right under Batawi's face. As if I move him, take profits. And uh, we did, took out the initial investment and plus some, but then let the rest ride. And right now it's doing awful. That's uh, 0 0.01, just a little bit above what we paid before. And it's probably lower than that. That was on August 17th. So yeah, so probably lower, maybe even below what we paid. So these are all down, but we've done pretty well so far. Like Genso Kishi, we bought it at uh, a penny and a half, went up to $1.60. Now it's at 20 cents and it's probably lower. Everdome. A uh, fraction of a penny went up to eight cents. Fame, da, 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 da. So again, these are very risky plays. I think because the market's going down, of course, fame and the token goes down. When, once the bull run comes back, it'll come back. But it is how it is for all those things. <laughs> James said sold going to $900 at one point. Hey, don't forget, the guy that's talking to you right now, remember, did I not say that Bitcoin is going to 150000 Got that wrong. Did I not say that Ethereum is going to go to 10000 That was wrong. Did I not say that Cardano would go to $3? I did get that right. But that was just, uh, these are just guesstimations. And of course, we know the, of course, the VGX token to $30. It went to 29 cents to seven bucks, but still, awful call, Rob. Awful. And uh, that's what's up. So we all won't get them right, but maybe in the future we will. Did I miss the Luna Classic talk? No, this is pretty much it. We're talking about it. And that's, the, that's all. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Crypto Nights. I appreciate it. Jado says, is this your house? This is not my house. This is uh, my mom's house. This is in the basement, and it's a very nice green screen. But it looks good, doesn't it? Let's see. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny, Beardy. Yeah. 
Oh, I'll even show you. Like, uh, let's see. There's my NFT right there, matter of fact. So let's see. What else did I forget? What do you think about Cosmos Atom? I think it's a great project. Uh, I think it's one of those, I believe it's a layer zero solution and uh, I still own some, still own a good amount actually. And I really, I haven't started back dollar cost averaging into Cosmos, but I'm waiting for some time. I think it's gonna do very well and it's got a lot of good projects on it. So I don't see, it's got a good team. I don't see why it couldn't uh, do very well in the next bull run. You know, I don't, but the thing that Lucas that concerns me is I haven't heard much news about it. Maybe I'm just not doing the right investigations in the right place. So if, you, if anybody hears anything about Cosmos, let me know. I think a uh, guy over at Coin Bureau did something good. Oh, Jungle Link's here. I don't think security classification will be a death sentence. That's true. It just means probably we'll have to report key info, which is great for investors. And it's a good point by Jungle. If you don't watch Jungle Link, when I first got into crypto, I watched him. I, I catch his videos every so often. Whenever he puts them out, I think he's getting kind of lax on things. That's okay, Jungle. I know you got to work. But it's true. Just because you're delegated as a security doesn't mean that you just go away. We trade securities all day long, right? They're called stocks. So it's not a big deal. It's just that you got to jump through a lot of hoops. And I think how I see things going is like this. To be registered with the SEC as far as a security would probably take a lot of legal implications and a lot of money. And a lot of these projects may not have that much money and they just kind of will fade away, which I think is actually good. Let's be honest. Some of these projects don't, should not be around. So then I think what the next option that'll happen is that the projects that do actually have the money and do have the, the, the staying power can actually buy into the process, go through the whole paperwork, jump through all the hoops, and then finally be registered under the SEC as a security, then the exchanges can list them. The next step, I think, is they will go to these other smaller projects and go, we like your project, we're just gonna absorb you. How much do you want for this project? And we absorb your developers, because we just saw how much a developer makes and how little they actually are especially for Web3. So why wouldn't you just go to another project and go, we want you, we're going to uh, assimilate you into our project. It worked very well for Facebook and it also worked very well for Amazon. I think that's the next evolution. <sighs> Rob, you questioned why someone over 50 would want to invest in crypto a week ago. Would that be, I don't think I said that. <sighs> If I said it and it sounded like that, that's not what I'm talking about. If you're over 50, here's another thing. I, when I look at things to invest into, I look for some asymmetrical bets, right? And I also diversify as much as possible. So there's some that are a little bit more risky, like crypto, and there's some that are a little less risky, like you know Masterworks, you know, for the fine art, fractionalized shares of fine art, and real estate. These are the things that I, I don't know about much about art. Real estate's pretty, pretty solid, reasonably solid. So I kind of juggle between those two. So if I am an older person, which I am around this age, uh, if you're 59 years old and you want to get into something, I can't give you advice, but if I was 59 years old, and depending on my condition health-wise, what my goals potentially would be, if I think well, I'm going to live till 90, um, then maybe I go for a longer play as far as investing. But if I'm like, you know what? Equities, how much are they going to return? Well, statistically, for the S&P 500, looking at 12.7% or year over year. Not bad, right? 12%, great, but I'm 59. Or maybe I want to flip a house. Well, that's a lot of work. And then, of course, there's a little bit more risk doing those types of things. And then maybe, uh, of course, if I buy those houses, then I have to get on the 15 or 30-year mortgages. That's great. Maybe the kids will want it. But maybe... I diversify a little bit into a crypto a digital asset, just something. Again, what do we talk about on this channel? We talk about the rules and the rules look like this. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Say it's all gone. If you say it's all gone and you can't go and go, well, I'll just put my life savings into Luna Classic, you know? So if you're thinking about it, maybe you smart small. $5 dollar cost average into something very safe like a bitcoin or an ethereum or something like that and go from there so i don't think it's a bad choice at all diversification i think works much better that's me <laughs> this is a good point free kekistan 
I'm not complaining. I've been holding Cardano forever, but why is everyone so hyped about it lately? I heard someone, something about Basil, Basel, how do you say it? And that's the extent of my knowledge. So remember, Basel, these upgrades, one of the knocks on, on Cardano was that it's kind of slow as far as transactions per second. And what they want to do is this, in this upgrade with Basel, there's a thing called pipelining. And the pipelining apparently allows that to open up and increase the transactions per second to, actually they really didn't say, but I know it increases it a, a good amount. So from there, we'll see how it works. I think that's the big thing. And then also for developers to build on it, I think it's another uh, big positive uh, for Basel. So that's one of the reasons. And then also, um, it just shows that, you know, they... Cardano to go from the things that they've done and then kind of go through these upgrades. And it's not just like they just upgrade the code and that's it. You know, they have to talk to uh, over 50 plus exchanges and they have to do tech support as they do it for across the entire globe. It's a pretty massive undertaking. So I think that's one of the reasons why people are excited. They, they can pull it off, even though they have only had to delay it at what, a month or so? It's pretty big. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see if he shows up. <laughs> I think he will. Uh, I don't get it. Hi, Rob. Is there any point in staking my ETH for 4%? Is there any other advantage other than 4% interest in Scott? I don't know. I don't, I don't like the fact that, you know, your Cardano stake for so long, or your Cardano, your Ethereum is staked for so long. So you, it's at minimum six months to 12 months. But 4%, I mean, if you want to, uh, I just don't like the whole process. That's all. Uh, Dancing Cow, love your bids. Thank you. Lost some money when Luna crashed. We all did. But made my money back and more on the dead cat bounce. Huh. Left profit I made it in and it's up 109%. Let's do this. Go figure, right? Go figure. Uh, it's funny. That is the, the best phrase in crypto so far. Uh, homes in California are 1 million. Jeez, crime me Christmas, really. Robbie Stillman, I'm not. <laughs> You're all getting timeouts. No, Larry Wilson, have you reviewed Divi? Divi's a great project. And uh, I met the founder in Puerto Rico, real great guy. And had breakfast at his place with a bunch of other different people. And uh, Divi works really well. And it's, it's like you can, you can pay somebody via text message. It's pretty cool. And it uh, just hasn't gotten much traction. So maybe I should talk more about it. Seems like 600 bucks. Yeah. Where will Sweat go? I don't know. Like I said, I did that deep dive on Sweatcoin, and there were some pros and cons. Uh, the pros is that they were a Web2 process for $110 million. Now they have over $13 million. You know, since April... They have 13 million wallets, crypto wallets created just for Sweatcoin. 13 million. I think that's the fastest of all the cryptos that are out there. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section. But the problems that I see is that it's built on near protocol. And that's a lot of transactions to go through. So hopefully near protocol is up to the task. And if they are, then that would be a, probably a big project to uh, look into. Near protocol. Mm, it should work in Spain. Correct me if I'm wrong. It just doesn't work here in the States because, you know, Gensler. Gensler, I know you watch, so I'd like you to chime in. <laughs> That's where I got it, 3D green screens. Yeah, Muller, I talked to him a couple weeks ago. He's busy playing golf. Thoughts on Phantom? Phantom could do well. I still have some Phantom. Yeah, when Mullet? I should probably text him today, see what he's doing. I will text him today. <laughs> Watching best answers. Good guy. Got a lot of good information. Uh, ben too. Oh, Cosmos is also taking Uniswap. And so who's next to port over? Interesting. Did not know that. See, I'm telling you, the guys that are, you people that are here right now uh, are the real deal. Not the ones from the from the bull run days. Uh, 
SEC doesn't have the budget to review thousands of coins tokens, so it's up to the project to make sure they aren't a security. So There's another, another point to think, to ponder. So think about this. If the CFTC says, okay, we're going to take Ethereum and Bitcoin, that's it. SEC, and remember, it's not the, it's not the job of the SEC to set policy, to set law. They're not that. They're, they're to enforce it. So that has to really go through Congress and the legislator. So if they're going to say, okay, everything is a security, whatever, then all these projects have to come in. How long do you think it's going to take for project number 287 on coin market cap to flow through the SEC? That's something to consider. And that's why I think there's going to be a lot of consolidation. But wouldn't that be not a bad thing? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> My girlfriend asked me why I spent some hours day watching YouTube videos. Because they're addicting sometimes. Uh, no. Okay, I think... Let me make sure I didn't miss anything. No, I'm the farthest thing from Satoshi you could possibly get. George should not convert to USD. George should not convert to USDC and self-custody. You got a self-custody. That's, that's for sure. Ah, yeah. Sweat will be available as an ERC-20 Ethereum token and a NEAR token. That's right. I am. And on that note, that's it for today. So look, guys, we're coming up on an hour, which is a long time. But um, this is great. It's good times. I always like hanging out with everybody. So if you like today's video, and this is that last part, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Hopefully YouTube uh, actually you know, reports to you and tells you it's going to happen. Doubtful. But if it does, that'd be great. That's it for today. So thanks so much for stopping by. It's been awesome. And uh, I'll see you on the next one, which is going to be in uh, 45 minutes, the uh, premiere. So i got to get out of here. Thanks, everybody. Adios.